At around 0100 on the 6th of June 1944, the British paratroopers of the 7th Battalion, the Parachute Regiment of the 6th Airborne Division, began landing in the vicinity of the French town of Ranville as part of the Allied invasion of Normandy. Commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Richard Pine Coffin, the 7th Battalion experienced a scattered drop over the Normandy countryside, and by 0130, only 50% of the battalion's personnel had been accounted for, whilst most of the unit's equipment and heavy weaponry was lost during the landings. In spite of this, Lieutenant Colonel Pine Coffin rallied together what men he had at his disposal, and set off to secure the battalion's D-Day objectives, which were to reinforce those British troops holding the Pegasus and Horsa bridges, and establish a defensive perimeter around the town of Benneville and the nearby hamlet of Le Port. A Sikh Fairborn divisional history records that Lieutenant Colonel Pine Coffin decided to move off from the rendezvous to the bridges without any further delay, leaving his second in command, Major Eric Steele Balm, to collect any stragglers. C Company set off at the double and was followed by A Company, which turned left over the bridges and took up positions in houses in the southern part of Benneville. B Company moved into positions in the wood and hamlet of Le Port at the northern end of Benneville, indulging in some skirmishing with a small number of enemy who were summarily dealt with. By dawn on the 6th of June 1944, the 7th Battalion, the Parachute Regiment, had successfully attained its objectives and was digging in around Benneville and Le Port. However, the battalion's position was extremely vulnerable as its radios, machine guns and mortars were still missing and the unit was still only able to muster around 50% of its total fighting strength. To try and compensate for these deficiencies, Lieutenant Colonel Pine Coffin directed his troops to mount patrols to gather intelligence on the opposing German forces and to give the enemy the impression that the 7th Battalion was stronger than it really was. One such patrol was carried out by men of 9 Platoon of C Company which, at around 0530, headed out to reconnoitre a piece of wooded high ground to the southwest of Le Port. At some point during their mission, the patrol bumped into a large group of German infantrymen, who were preparing to mount a counter-attack against the 7th Battalion. After a brief firefight, in which one of the British paratroopers was wounded, the British patrol was compelled to withdraw to their defensive positions in Le Port, with Private John Butler later recalling that, on the way back to our main line, at one point we were able to see paras lying on a bank near the village of Le Port in an obvious ambush position, but with their backs towards us and also to the Jerry patrol that was following us. The Jerrys were passing a farm and an orchard at the time, but once passed they would be able to see the paras with their backs towards them. The platoon sergeant then ordered a rifleman named Mortimer to run out and warn the paras. Without hesitation, Private John Mortimer left the safety of his position and ran out into no man's land to warn the nearby paratroopers of the impending enemy attack. As he did so, he was spotted by the German patrol and fired upon, with one of the enemy rounds striking and knocking him to the ground. Although seriously wounded, Private Mortimer gathered what strength he had and continued to crawl towards the paratrooper group, during which he was hit for a second time. Despite this, and the weight of the enemy fire being received, Private Mortimer pressed on, and it was as he got to within 150 metres of the paratrooper group that he lifted himself up onto his knees and shouted to warn them of the German patrol. It was at that point that Private John Mortimer was hit for the third and final time and was killed. Through the courageous and selfless actions of Private John Mortimer, the British paratrooper group was able to redeploy itself to meet the enemy threat to its rear. Unfortunately though, despite laying down his life to save his colleagues, Private Mortimer would never be recognised for his actions, with Private Butler continuing. Mortimer gave his life to warn those men. That is what the Victoria Cross is all about, but Mortimer received no decoration or recognition. There was no officer there to make a recommendation. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you never miss one of my future videos.